So we'll go in the paddock with them. Would you like a handful as well? Hey. So these guys are into the paddock. Okay, here we go. What's up guys? Oh my lord! Oh my lord! Oh god! <laughs> <laughs> oh look, look, look over here. Look at this one. Look at his little floppy neck. <laughs> Hello darling. Oh god. There you go. Oh dear, you've already had one. Here, come here, come here. Oh dear lord. Everyone loves their wet breakfast. Breakfast. <laughs> See that? Well, this one's playing like rugby. There you go. All gone now. All gone. See? I have nothing left. Hello. <laughs> Hello, Fluffy. <laughs> Wool belongs on sheep, not on humans. So like, let's just explain, you give the sheep a haircut when they need it to prevent their fly strike and you go, you might have to trim a little bit of their, their hair off for, for the sheep's best interest, don't you? Yeah, just to keep them. So they all originated from this animal called the wild mouflon. Okay. And the wild mouflon looked a bit more like a goat. Whereas the more merino breeds, which are typically bred for wool production, so like Peter up the back there, you can yeah. see he's a lot wrinklier, he's got a lot more folds of skin, yeah. so he's been bred that way to hold more wool. You shear them because they need a haircut because it's good for them. Yeah. You know, we don't shear them to make sell their wool like this. The industry does and use this excuse that they need a haircut, you know, but they... And it's because of people, how people, how humans have changed them over time. That, that they produce this wool that... Yeah, yeah. Human beings created the problem of the wool on the sheep through selective breeding. And yeah, they should just be looked after, not used for their wool and killed. That's a wild keeper. <laughs> <laughs> this one's for the, for the pool room. Ah, oh, thanks guys! <laughs> Who are these two? This is Morgan, I think this is Alan. Okay. You're Morgan Freeman. Hello. Morgan Free Sheep. Free <laughs> Do you get kookaburras out here? Uh, more in the bushland area. Yeah, you can yeah, hear them? <laughs> kookaburras sound like this. <laughs> like, yeah, similar to a monkey. Clipping into kookaburra now. And, and where are we going now? Uh, this is Goat Mountain. Goat Mountain. Oh, falling down a, a ditch. <laughs> Goat Mountain, like, like not Mount Rushmore, Mount Goatmore. <laughs> oh dear. Here they come. The goats rush in. Humans actually name their beards after the goat. The goatee. Hello guys, am I allowed to crouch down? Yeah, this is Bro and Amigo. Hello guys, how are you? Oh, hey, hello. Hello Amigo. Hello, Emmy Goat. <laughs> hey, dear. A, a How are you? How are you? Good, nice yeah, to meet you. Okay. Every area for the animals. Yeah. So they've got something exciting to do when they yeah. wake up in the morning. So they've got um, all rocks over there, like a big pile of rocks to climb okay. on, and the tires. Yeah. And then we've got the trampoline. They got they've a trampoline. Got, yep. And they've got a big goat jungle gym up the back as well. A jungle other, gym. Yep. The other paddock, and they can climb up to the top of Goat Mountain too. Wow. Would you like to walk up the top? Let's go go hang out on Goat Mountain. Hey, how you going, mate? Look at his horn. Wow. So this is Goat Mountain. Check it out. <laughs> you guys want to come up? Come on. Come up Goat Mountain. Come on. Come on guys. Me. Hello. This is where they have the, 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 the deck party up here. Oh, oh, this is a goat's life. Look at him looking at me. <laughs> Who's this guy on the trampoline? He's not a goat. First time I've seen a goat trampoline. <laughs> Here we go, oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God, look, look, he's eating. Quick, close. Oh dear Lord, have mercy on everyone. This is this is the most adorable thing ever. 
Oh my God. Oh, we're honored to have you here. Thank you so much. Yeah, so we're just talking about how the sanctuary started. Mm. Um, Edgar. With a pig. Yeah. Yeah, he wandered into my heart and my home and look what happened. How did you find <laughs> Edgar? Um, we got him for a photo shoot, raising awareness about the our flawed animal protection laws where the code of practice was being reviewed in okay. Australia. Yeah, so we needed a pig for a photo shoot. Oh wow. And I got the pig before the photo shoot and um, got him the day before and he was covered in poo and cleaned him up and did the photo shoot and the photo shoot went really well with James Cromwell and James had this idea, he said, look, why don't I march up the steps of Parliament House for the pig and we'll demand a better deal for pigs. And he said, yeah, it's a really good idea. I said, oh my gosh, now I've really got to teach the, the pig to, to walk on a lead and be very humanised because yeah. he wasn't. And I just went down to my local park in Kilmore with my little dog and my little pig and people just came from everywhere. Like they were wow. blown away when they, they saw, saw Edgar on a lead. I was like, oh, lead, wow. And he's so friendly, he's so clean, and he's better than my boyfriend. And yeah. just actually watching the connections with people and Edgar, Edgar just to their heart yeah so i said i'm gonna start a sanctuary <laughs> yeah because it's just not enough to save one animal it's like the knock-on effect of having the sanctuary and educating people and getting them to meet the animals it influences and to make different choices yeah you know we can we can tell people what to do and and they might do it they might not do it we've got no authority to yeah. do it no guarantee they do it when people actually believe that change themselves when they feel it in their heart yeah you'll live it no matter how hard it is and when you know, you meet animals and their poos to form. It yeah. really, it really gets to you here. Yeah. I see it with people come to the sanctuary. They see the birds and and the, and the pigs. The pigs really get people. Like you know, people think that they're they're dirty and everything. You know, and they're so clean. I know. Yeah, but it's it's just beautiful to people to meet the animals to hear the story about Clarabelle the calf, the cow that you know hit her calf in in the forest. You know? Yeah. People can tell you that, but we actually we actually witnessed it, and that that blew us away. That story Amazing. about her hiding that calf. Uh, from us, who we were the good guys, but she didn't. Know we look the same. Yeah, we look the same. As... And I think that's the most powerful story because people always think, you know, dairy is so, you know, bucolic and kind and good, and um, the the tragedies those calves and even the mamas. Like, you know, I rescued Clarabel because I always wanted to. Um, Duke of Forest and the mothers. Now we, we know about the bobby calves. And yeah. Are very uh, passionate. You see these little doe-eyed babies, and they they really get you here. Yeah. But the mama cows who continually have their babies, babies taken, taken away, mm. away and away, we forget about them. So we rescued her, and she was being sent to slaughter, and she was pregnant. Pregnant. Yeah. First time in her life she got to keep her baby. And that's Amazing. Awesome. And yeah, yeah. And now she's calm. Then she knows the baby's yeah. not going anywhere. And we had the um, parliamentary inquiry into the animal act in Victoria, and they came out here, and the the lead. Um, Chairman of that committee, you know, when he went down and uh, was, I was telling Clara Bell, so he said, "Come on, we've got to go." He goes, "That's it. like he he, was he couldn't." Yeah. Tears to actually to, to see it. Yep. To see it, we we don't see what happens to these animals. No. Yeah, it's um, I just it's just beautiful every day. You look around here and these lovely animals just just chilling. You know? Yeah. Sheep might go wandering past or something, and cheeky money, get you cheeky money. Give you, I'll show you cheeky money. Okay. Ruby and Monique, see, two sentient animals that want to live. They want to desire freedom and happiness, and here they are together. And love having their bellies rubbed. And love both that love having their bellies rubbed. <laughs> it's a really beautiful place you have here, Pam. Thank I've you. never been here. It's amazing. It just fills me with joy being here. So good. What people might not um, realize watching is that these places they are very expensive to run, and you'd have to rally in people's support for donations yeah. to feed all these animals and people often come here and they go well, how, how is this funded and this is actually funded by donations by yeah. people who who believe in our work yeah and that absolutely blows me away when yeah. i started the sanctuary and i, I funded it all myself for, for many years and then we started to grow and i used to I, I still feel very humbled when people give me money but they say no pam thank you because you're doing what we can't do yeah and that's actually really Really lovely that you know people want to have a sanctuary for rescued animals, but um, they don't have the opportunity or the means to do it. Whereas we, it works together. You know, we. It's, it's beautiful. We, um, yeah, only because of donations and the goodness of the human heart. Beautiful. So if anyone out there wants to help out Pam and Edgar's uh, mission here, and they want to do something for animals, they don't know what, and you might be a working parent, you might not have time to go out and do your own activism. What you can do is donate to Edgar's mission. Yeah. And we'll leave a link down below that you can do that right now and help out feeding the pigs and the maintenance yeah. and all the different things the animals need. And yeah, thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much, Pam, no, for all your work. Liking and sharing mission. our photos. Yeah. Some people don't have money, yeah. and that's understand. We're all, we're all poor at the moment. Yeah. Um, but yeah, liking and sharing our posts is wonderful as well. As well, yeah, just to create awareness. Or even they could go the other way you know, and put us out of business by stop having animals in these farm situations. Yes. We're probably the only organisations that's working towards obsolescence. Yeah. Yeah, well, all the meat and dairy eaters out there, sanctuaries to rescue, that these animals are being rescued from 
the industry that you guys are supporting. So. Yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. When pigs meet one another, they go, this deep, yeah, yeah. and you go into those sheds and you're walking down the pigs, you go, go, go. they're actually saying hello. Oh, wow. To the very species that's incarcerating. Oh, they're no. just saying hello to us. And one of the things I see with pigs that's really interesting, their capacity to forgive. You know, yeah. We have these pigs that come from factory settings, I mean, horrible settings, and they'll be frightened and they'll be scared. And then they turn around to these willing, engaging, yeah. happy beings. It's, it's just amazing. Like we humans, we carry these grudges and all the stupid things we go on. But the pigs, they just, they are so intelligent. Yeah, more forgiving. They are so intelligent. And I think, you know, not that we should value things because of their intelligence. No. A hell of a lot of humans are going to be in trouble. Yeah. I think it compounds the suffering of what we're doing to yeah. these animals. And yeah. that's really an indictment on us that we, we can do so much better. We can. We can. Do we so can. Much better.